Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The liberalization of air transport in Africa was a key discussion point at the recent Aviation Stakeholders Convention held in South Africa. Keith Campbell tells us more. Hi Keith. South Africa's Transport Minister Dupur Peters and the head of the country's Civil Aviation Authority have called on African countries to liberalize their air transport. Why is this necessary? It's necessary because Liberalizing air transport in Africa will greatly stimulate the air transport sector in Africa. We know from experience elsewhere in the world, other regions have liberalized air transport. We've seen fares go down and we've seen traffic go up. So it would be a great stimulus both uh, to the industry itself, but also given the importance of air transport to the wider economy, a great stimulus to the entire economic uh, development of, of the African countries involved. Uh, the reason it hasn't been done, the reason why uh, it still hasn't been done in Africa, is that a number of countries are worried that it will drive the national flag carriers out of business, that they will not be able to compete in an open transport market against airlines from other African countries. And the, the fact of the matter is, yes, there's no doubt that some African airlines, uh, especially less efficient state-owned ones, will go under if the sector is liberalized. On the other hand, the remaining airlines will become stronger and more competitive globally than they currently are at the moment. So the benefits are significant. Uh, the to cite one example, there's been a limited degree of liberalization in Africa on largely bilateral business. But just over a decade ago, South Africa and Kenya liberalized air transport between themselves. And since then, the number of passengers flying between the two countries has, has increased by 69%. So there are very significant benefits to be gained from liberalizing uh, air transport in Africa and in fact in January 11 countries, 11 African countries including South Africa agreed that they would liberalize the air transport among themselves. Um, theoretically Africa should already have done so. There is what's called a Yamusukru decision uh, mandating uh, liberalization of transport across the whole of Africa. It has not been implemented. And these 11 countries are basically going ahead with their own mini Yamusukru uh, program. How important is the aviation sector for Africa? Ah, it is important, there's no question about that. Uh, it is responsible for creating, sustaining uh, about 5.8 million jobs across the continent. Um, it's a major source of uh, income for a number of countries. In many cases, it's the safest and sometimes the only means of transport between countries and within countries. A lot of African countries are rather sizable geographically and their rail and road networks are sadly inadequate. And the international rail and road networks are even worse. And so air transport is an essential means to link African countries together within their own borders and to link them to each other and to the wider world. Safety was another key point of discussion during the convention. How is Africa performing in this regard? Sadly, Africa remains the worst region in the world for uh, safety. However, uh, two things have been made clear. The best African airlines, the five top African airlines, are world class. These are South African Airways, Royal Air Maroc, Kenya Airlines, Ethiopian, and Egypt Air. So at one end of the spectrum, you've got world-class cl airlines as safe as any, anywhere else, and safer than uh, many others in other regions. Second uh, thing is that safety is improving. Last year, there was not a single uh, what they call a hull loss involving a jet airliner in Africa. Hull loss is when uh, aircraft is written off 
in an accident. Not one jet airliner was written off uh, in an accident uh, last year in Africa. So that, that's very good news. But the progress is slower than desired. The progress is slower than wanted. Um, to cite one example, uh, runway accidents, um, accidents involving airliners and runways, um, have declined from 0 0.59 per million sectors in 2012 to 0 0.39 per million sectors last year. But the aim is to have cut that by half by the end of this year. So the progress is significant, but it doesn't look like they'll reach the target. Uh, th there's a bunch of targets known as the Abuja safety targets that were agreed in Abuja, Nigeria at the meeting of uh, ministers of transport and of aviation from across Africa. So progress is slow, uh, slower than desired. And there's a, there's a lot of support and administrative uh, activities that need to be done that haven't been done. So one of the targets is for every African country to have an autonomous civil aviation authority. But most still do not have this. Um, every African country is meant to develop and implement a safety plan for aviation. This is under the aegis of the International Civil Aviation Organization, which is a specialized agency of the United Nations. Uh, but so far, only 14 have started the process. This process is meant to be finished by the end of this year, by the way, but only 14 have started it. And there are four levels in the process, level four being the highest and final, and no country has yet progressed past level two. And there is, especially as I say, on this administrative side, this regulatory side, uh, progress is especially slow. Um, all the countries international, sorry, all the continents international airports are meant to have been certified by the end of this year. In fact, only 28% of them have been certified so far. So progress is happening, but it's not fast enough. Uh, it's it's uh, the International Air Transport Association, which is the, the, the airlines group, and uh, the International Civil Aviation Organization are both pushing African governments to do better, to do more. Interestingly, uh, one of the safety recommendations of ECAO, the UN body, is that all African airlines go through what's called an IATA operational safety audit. Now, as it's turned out, no African government has yet required any African airline to go through an operational safety audit. But the airlines themselves, uh, supported by IATA, are doing it. Uh, at so far, seven uh, African airlines have uh, gone through the program and have been certified on the what's called the IOSA registry. And another 13 are in the process of going through the EOSA, the IATA Operational Safety Audit. So the airlines are taking action themselves. Um, it's become clear, as I mentioned earlier, the top airlines are very safe. A lot of the problem with safety in Africa is the small operators, small airlines operating small aeroplanes. And IATA is, has developed a special program for them, which will be launched in Nairobi next month. Uh, that's June. Uh, so the industry is also uh, taking action to improve safety in the continent. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.